Lesson 5, Shading Models. To follow along with this lesson, you will need the code and setup from OpenGL Lesson 4. In this lesson, we demonstrate how shading models affect the way objects are rendered. There are two shading models in OpenGL, flat and smooth. For this lesson, we made modifications to the code from the previous lesson, Lesson 4. You can download that code from our Lesson 4 page and make modifications to it, or just download our Lesson 5 code and follow along. To start, we change this line in the main function to include support for the depth buffer. We will explain the depth buffer in greater detail in a later lesson. For now, we will just remark that the depth buffer is used here to properly render spheres. We made a few changes to the initialize function as well. First, we changed the bounds of the bounding box to go from negative 3 to 3 in the z direction. Then we moved the light source to 0, 1, negative 0.5 to improve the lighting effects. Next, we replaced most of the draw function code. In the first line, we added the depth buffer to the glClear function. Then we added a call to enable the depth test. Lastly, we took out all the drawing code from the previous lesson and replaced it with this. These arrays define the colors that we use for drawing and two settings for ambient light. This loop then runs our drawing code twice, once with flat shading and once with smooth shading. Inside we have code to draw a sphere and a triangle. To draw the sphere, we set the ambient and diffuse reflections to green and the specular to white. We set the ambient light to low here because we change it to render the triangles. Next, we draw the sphere using the glut solid sphere function. For now we are going to ignore the rest of this code since we have not discussed matrix transformations yet. We will simply remark that this translate command sets the position of the center of the sphere. The glut solid sphere function takes three arguments. These are the radius, slice count, and stack count. The radius is simply the distance from the sphere to its center. The slice count is the number of segments around the side of the sphere, and the stack count is the number of segments up the sphere. Next, we draw a triangle. The first three lines here turn off the diffuse and specular lighting by setting the material property to black. Then we increase the ambient light to full intensity. Doing this is equivalent to turning off the lighting and just using the ambient color. With this set, we draw our triangle with one red, one green, and one blue vertex. The color is set by setting the ambient material property. If we execute our program, we see this. On the left, we have a sphere and triangle drawn with flat shading. On the right, we have the exact same sphere and triangle drawn with smooth shading. Notice that the flat shading makes the facets of the sphere visible, while the smoothly shaded sphere appears more spherical. This triangle demonstrates that smooth shading can be applied even without lighting. By coloring the vertices red, green, and blue, it is easy to see how the smooth shading blends colors. Colors are always set at the vertices, and the interior of the polygon is a blend of those colors. In OpenGL's smooth shading mode, the colors are linearly interpolated, which is known as gross shading. Triangles with flat shading are colored the color of the last vertex, which is blue in this case. Here's how the scene looks from the outside. The small red ball is the viewer at the origin, and the small white ball is the light source. The spheres are located in the plane z equals negative 2, and the triangles are at z equals negative 0.2. The advantage of flat shading is that it is faster to render, while smooth shading makes polygonal surfaces look smooth. Of course, if we make our polygon small enough, either flat or smooth shading will work equally well. Here we have one torus rendered with flat shading and one with smooth shading. However, the polygons are so small that both look smooth. The spheres that we rendered are primitives in GLUT, and the functions to draw them specify the vertex normals as well. There is some question, however, when we render a shape such as this, whether we want to render it as an icosahedron or as an approximation to a sphere. There are more subtleties about normals that affect shading that we will address in future lessons. For example, this tetrahedron can be drawn as a triangle strip, however it would be more properly rendered as four triangles to give correct lighting. We have a few more remarks to make. When we rendered our triangle with flat shading, it was drawn with the color of the last vertex. Geometric primitives are always colored with the last vertex of the polygon in flat shading, except for polygons rendered with the GL polygon specifier. 
These use the first vertex. Also, the default shading mode is smooth. This concludes the lesson.